Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classic. This is episode number 1427 and double shot number 1321. I have roughly one DC trade, one Marvel trade, uh, not one Marvel, one Titan Comics trade. Probably thinking Titan Comics. Well, it's technically second, it's actually the third chair I've come from them, but you'll find out what it is in a minute. Well, probably when I finish this one, first one here. First up, it is. Justice League, Volume 7, Galaxy of Terrors. This collection is 48 to 52. You might be thinking, 40 to 52? That's only about five issues. That's really short. Especially since these trades are basically famous. These, this particular trade series usually puts a lot of issues in their trades. That's one surprisingly is really short. Now here's something I should point out, though. It took a while. This book just came out, like, oh, just a couple weeks ago. And these issues came out, like, last year. Like, wow. And here's the thing. Next comes after this is Dark... Is basically the Death Metal tie-ins. Which is only about five issues. Yeah. It's actually, it's about six issues this is. Yeah, six issues. Galaxy of Terrors. Now, this comes from two different, two different writers for this book. First, we have Simon Spurrier. Who does issues 48 to 50. And Jeff Loveless, who does issues... 51 to 52. The artwork in these issues are done by two different artists, Aaron Lepsey and Robinson Ruka. The cover art here is done by Nick Durrington. The first three issues is simply put this, the Justice League are lost in space and they have an alien planet and like because they're very strong so the alien just proclaimed the rule of the planet and they want nothing to do with it. All they want to do is go home. So... They basically just form their way to go back home and basically weasel way out of this, and they do. This only lasts for a few issues, and it's a pretty weak story arc. The next two issues are simply them going back to Earth after you know, going back. They finally arrive back there, but they were this some kind of plant creature. And, of course, the hallucination, there's this fantasy of, like, Crysef and the Earth, which was really nice. And, like, stuff they faced previously. But if you think about it, these five issues are pretty weak, to say the least. By far, out of the first 52 issues, these five issues are by far the weakest issues of this whole run so far. Why do I feel that way? Because there's barely any stakes in here and just basically moving along. Yeah, this is during the period of time we have to have filler writers in order to basically get, to get, these, get these issues out. Yep, now... In the previous trade, that covered issues 40 to 47, roughly eight issues. And that was actually pretty good. That was actually the first set of writers that came out after Scott Snyder's epic run ended. Now we have Simon Spur and Jeff Loveless. Simon Spur, I do like the guy's work. I've read his work for X Force. I've read his, uh, he did X Force Volume 4, really good book, thoroughly enjoyed it. And X Men Legacy Volume 2. I get the fact that he didn't like that book because. Like, the book itself, people are losing interest in the book because they have Legion just going on a random date with Blindfold. Because the relationships are completely out of nowhere. This is by far not one of his best works. The guy has basically written better stuff than this. Heck, this is one of the guys who wrote Dr. Afra. Yeah, he took over from Karen Gillian on the book. Which, the book itself was so really good under him. Under him. But this, this is pretty weak. As in the case of Jeff Loveless. Oh boy, this guy. Okay. This is one of a half books I've read basically where he has written. He's also wrote Groot. I believe he also wrote Rock Gro the Groot series, which was not very popular with a lot of people because of the fact that the book itself was only lasted six issues. He also did Nova Volume 7, which that got quickly canceled after only seven issues, seeing so brought back as artist. I don't think necessarily Jeff Loveless is basically a terrible writer per se. It's just that a lot of the time, for some people, including me, it's just that the stories he write are just not that interesting. Sad to say. The artwork in here is fantastic. I think the artist who does these issues is really good. I think that, I think in the opening issues, I think it's Aaron Lipsy, which I met the guy. Yeah, this is his artwork. He's really good. The artwork looks gorgeous. Like in these issues, it is really good. And by far, the high point of these issues is simply put, like, the artwork. 
Yes, that's the best thing you can say about these issues, is the artwork is fantastic. Yep. Now, for the last two issues, this is not done by Aaron Lepsey. This is done by, I believe, Robinson Ruka. Yeah, Robinson Ruka. And he's actually a really good artist. I believe he's, I think he's one of the artists who actually has drawn some of the issues that Scott Snyder worked on. So at least he got some familiarity with this. It's really good artwork, and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's, yeah. It's just okay at best. It's slightly better than the Alien story, in my opinion. But it kind of feels like something that you would see. Basically, reading the, the two-parter for this one, which is called Guard of the Mercy. Yeah, the Guard of Mercy, which... Oh, yeah, I almost forgot to mention. They bring back the Black Mercy... The, the plant from way back in a, 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 a Superman annual done by Alan Moore for the man who has everything. Which that's referencing here, which that's fantastic. But the story itself is just okay at best. It is a little bit better than the Alien story. I have no problem with Alien stories in the Justice League. It's just the story that Simon Spur was telling was just kind of weak and just not interesting at all. I didn't feel as though that just like was really needed here. You could put any random hero... But in the case, the way the way that Jeff Lois was telling this story for the, the, with the Black Mercy, I kind of felt this though. This should have been for Justice League Dark, not for Justice League. It's like basically this was originally a Justice League Dark story that apparently somebody at DC probably just didn't want to do, and this probably was probably floating around for a while, probably not very long. And maybe James Tenney was basically asked to do the story. He probably said no. Bram V, him, probably himself, probably said no. So I guess I guess Jeff Love was like, okay, I'll put this in Justice League. Because I'm doing two issues of Justice League. I'll put this two-parter there. Okay. But that's the problem with this book. I mean, fantastic artwork. Weak stories. Which, the story is not basically helping the artwork very much. But I'm going to this book roughly 8 out of 10, which... You are thinking eight out of ten for a Justice League trade. That's that's strange for you, Nick. You never give a Justice League trade that low of a rating. Well, it's because of the weak stories. That's the simple gist of it. Though Simon Spurry himself has done better stuff of this. Jeff Loveless is an okay writer. I don't think he has I have nothing really against the guy. It's just that, well, I think some of the stuff that he was writing here basically didn't really fit the Justice League. That's just my opinion. All right, moving into something a lot uh, really cool. We have Doctor Who. This is Doctor Who comic, alternating current. Yeah. As for what the appropriate name of this trade is, it's kind of weird to say at least because it's just basically called Doctor Who comic. It collects, well, the four issues of that. This is a story where you have a, another team up between the Jodie Whittaker Doctor, who was the 13th Doctor, and David Tennyson. Yeah, this is a follow-up to their previous team-up, where, because of their team-up, it kind of altered history a bit, where Earth was conquered, and get this, it was under control of the Silurians. Now, this is not the Silurians who popped up in Matt Smith's run. Oh, no. No, no, no. It is... the classic Silurians, the one who appeared... In the John Pertry story, do I think these could be the Sea Devils? But these Sea Devils look a little different than when they appeared in their story. They say it was Sea Devils, but it looks like the Silurians. Well, they say Sea Devils, but to me, basically, but design-wise, they look like the Silurians. But the Silurian, the, the Sea Devils, are simply the aquatic counterparts. Also, apparently, in this particular timeline, now. You can kind of say this is this is basically Jody Hauser, who was the writer of this book. This is would put probably for a lot of people something a creature people really wanted to see return to New Who. This is one of many creatures that have not returned yet. Like when they brought back the Ice Warriors, like people begged Rich D. Davis basically to bring uh, not Richard uh, Rich D. Davis back. He didn't want to do it at all, and Steve Moffat didn't do it at first, but he only did it. Because the fan demand to bring back the Ice Warriors. And he did. It's a pretty interesting story. But the Sea Devils, in my opinion, have not been brought back yet on TV. Nope. They Their last appearance is back in Warriors of the Deep. Which was her second ever appearance in Doctor Who. 
the first appearance they made was in classic in the classic who third doctor episode the sea devils yep and like there's in the case of basically where you place this in the case of uh david tennyson um not really sure exactly where he places because he's here with well jackie and look here's basically the sea devils they look a little different than their, they were picked on screen. It's almost like the artists basically, they drew inspiration from the classic version of the Sea Devils. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they have David Tennyson where he's wearing, I believe this was his first attire he had when he was in the show. Because later on he wore a blue outfit. I think this is actually his first attire. This is probably could be his first or second season in the show. Mm-hmm. Because later I switched to Blue Elf. Also in this world, uh, Pete, Peter Tyler's alive. They mention stuff that happened in Inferno. So, we also return of uh, Shakira from the Tesla story. Which, great. The Tesla story is fantastic, by the way. <coughs> it's a very underrated uh, 13 Doctor story. I, I thought it was really good, that one. I'm surprised they brought it back. By her back to the story, which is her first appearance since that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love basically David Tennant. Basically, when he reacts to her, is like, "Told you not, told you it's no good to be on the TARDIS." Like, and she, and Rose, like, "Where's my gun?" Because she's resistance fighter. I told you it's no no good on on the TARDIS. Am I, I suppose? But you look at you. You're gorgeous. And she's like, "Thank you." I never seen quite. I never seen one quite like you. You aren't me, are you? And then you have Joey Wicker probably going, nope, that would be me. Hello. I've, I take out my message, everything clear. Yes, well. <laughs> and he seems a little bit annoyed seeing his future kind of part. Though this is three regenerations after him. Which is fant which is so funny. Yeah, by the end of this, they do, like, go back to, the, they go back to Nikola Tesla. They do, in fact, avert his death. Because apparently his death basically caused all this, apparently. And with his death prevented, everything restored back to normal. Yep. And it's surprising that the Queen is actually coming along. That's by the fact, I think last time she appeared, I think she died maybe. But, yeah. But this overall is just really good. It's nice Nikola Tesla again. And then we end with Cornstar making an appearance. Yep. She's a old friend of the 13th Doctor. She appeared in, in the actual series, 13th Doctor. I think it was in the first one. This book is really good. Give this one a 9.5 out of 10. Really fun book. And it's a really good follow-up to um, the previous team-up story, which was actually pictures right here. They also mentioned the events of this right here. Uh, let's see. Where is it here? That one right there. Uh, Doctor Victorious, which I have read a little bit of that. It's quite interesting, the fact there's something playing for the show of Doctor Who, and they just didn't bother to do it. I don't really know why, but that's simply where it is. Yep, so yeah, that's it for Sickle View. Next one, in our comic corner, two Moon Knight trades. Yep, pretty this video. Bye.